Hey everybody, this week's Torah portion is Parshat Noach. And as the Torah tells us and describes Noah, he's Ish Tzadik, he's a very righteous individual, Tamim Hayab Adorotav, he's very pure in his generation. And let's face it, if God wipes out the entire planet, every human being, and only one family survives, known his family, you know that they got to be very, very unique. Because even though everyone was acting immoral, doing wrong things, doing terrible things, it took a tremendous amount of self-discipline and courage, faith in God, all kinds, everything imaginable necessary for Noah to stick to his guns and still be the righteous person he was despite what was going on everywhere, all around him. He totally bucked the system and didn't go with the flow by any stretch of the imagination. Very, very unique individual that believed in himself, believed in his values, believed in God. Now, where do we first see this, this trait? It actually happens even the pre-Noah story. It happens at the end of last week's Torah portion, when he's born. And when he's born, he's given the name Noah, and it tells us why they call him Noah. Zeyinachamenu, they had like a prophecy of what his name is associated with. Zeyinachamenu mima'asenu. This Noah, he is going to provide relief. He's going to give us rest from the work of the toil of our hands, from the ground which God has cursed. What does that mean? You see, after, the, the, uh, after Adam and Eve were kicked out of the Garden of Eden, God cursed the ground. And it was very, very difficult to make anything, to grow anything and such. And so Jewish tradition tells us, what does this verse refer to when it says that this one, this Noah will provide us relief from the work of our hands, from the land that God has cursed? Noah invented the plow. That's what Jewish tradition says. Noah invented the plow. What's it telling us? You see, here you had a terrible situation, you had a bad situation, and everybody, everybody just accepted it as is. That's what it is. They just lived with it. It's the, cur the ground is cursed. That's what it is. It's very difficult. That's just the way it is. Noah goes, no, 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 no. Let's think of how we can adapt. What could we do? What initiative can we take to make it better for ourselves? Don't just accept it as is. He thinks outside the box. What can we do to make it better? How can we make our lives easier? He invents the plow, and that makes it much easier to farm. And so you see from the very inception, Noah has this trait and this quality that even though everybody, everybody around him thinks a certain way, behaves a certain way, assumes things, no, who cares? Who cares if everybody thinks that way? And don't assume... I think differently, and he follows along with that. This trait of single-mindedness, of not following the masses, we need this now as Jews more than ever, because we know that Israel is on the hot seat. Most of the world is not supportive of Israel. Most of the world wants to point a finger at Israel. Thank God in the Western society, in Western countries, we don't see it as a majority. We're seeing it a lot on the campuses and certain individuals who are making ridiculous statements and apologizing for even the most horrible crimes that Hamas commits. But we know, based on UN votes and such, most of the world is not behind us. Most of the world is against us. And so it takes the uniqueness, the single-mindedness, the courage of a Noah that we have to learn from that and not give in to whatever the masses, because it's much easier to just go with the flow and go with the masses. Not us Jewish people. We never go with the masses. We never just go with the flow. And so Noah, very important that we learn about him and take the lessons from him as we face the challenges and the difficulties that the world confronts us with in our support for the Jewish people and for Israel and for goodness all over the world. Have a good Shabbat.